Memorial Day marks 100 years since the Tulsa race massacre. It's a dark chapter in American history and one that has been left out entirely in U.S. history books. On May 31st, 1921, the first shot was fired as violent white mobs attacked the thriving black neighborhood of Greenwood in Tulsa, Oklahoma, burning homes and by some estimates killing hundreds. Today, descendants of the massacre are calling for justice. The host of MSNBC's Cross Connection, Tiffany Cross, joins us from Tulsa. Tiffany, good morning. It's good to have you with us, though we are marking this disturbing and somber moment in American history. Just what's the mood like there ahead of the 100-year anniversary and as we do start to talk about this and grapple with it and, and have it in the conversation now? That's right, Savannah. And it's interesting that this comes at a time where there's so much debate around critical race theory, which, of course, is something that would have educated people about the Tulsa massacre that happened here. Mm. Look, the mood locally is obviously not one that's celebratory, but it is affirming because finally people are acknowledging the pain, the economic oppression uh, that happened here 100 years ago and how that has rippled through time and generations. Even today, when you look at the north side of Tulsa, where the mostly black residents live, you can still see the remnants of what happened here 100 years ago. It's a food desert. Uh, the schools are dilapidated. The uh, economics are obviously impacted, where the majority white parts of town continue to live uh, in a better way. And I know that you mentioned the descendants, but we should also acknowledge that survivors are still around. Mm -hmm. You have Mother Fletcher, who's 107 years old, who testified on Congress. You have Mother Randall, who's 105. And you also have uh, Uncle Red. This is Mother Fletcher's younger brother, who's 100 years old. So the fact that people are still alive and can testify and remember what happened here certainly uh, brings this moment. Uh, it hymns the past with the present here in Tulsa. Mm, and I know, like you just said, that I mentioned, but it's because you've been speaking to some descendants of the massacre. What did they tell you? So I want to play a soundbite from Dr. Tiffany Crutcher. You'll remember her brother was Terrence Crutcher, who was shot by law enforcement here in Tulsa, Officer Betty Jo Shelby, uh, who was not uh, ever found guilty of, of shooting him, even though she shot him while his hands are up. Take a listen to what she said, being a descendant of the Tulsa massacre. Us as descendants, you know, what would our lives have been if we weren't robbed of our generational wealth? You know, I, I often sit back and ponder about that. I, I ponder about Laurel Strafford with her great grandfather having the nicest hotel as a black man in the world. He could have been the Hilton. He could have been Marriott. He could have been the Hyatt. Mm. So you see, this has rippled through time and generations, like I said. And I know that you can see a lot of things happening behind me. So there are a lot of events to commemorate this weekend. They're setting up for an event that's taking place here in a couple hours. So I'll be here all day uh, bearing witness to how the residents here commemorate this very timely event. Yeah, and Tiffany, um, one last question for you before we switch over to a panel here. There have also been calls for reparations. Is that something elected officials are considering? So, no, and you'll be able to listen to a soundbite. Uh, I spoke with Mayor uh, G.T. Bynum here, who uh, he's a Republican. Uh, you may recall he opened up the city during the mask uh, mandate to have a Trump rally here. He is adamantly against reparations. So take a listen to our conversation. We're talking about uh, trying to make this a city where every kid has an equal shot at a great life for everybody over the long haul. You only do that by addressing the fundamental uh, uh, disparities that exist. And you don't do that with a cash payout. You do that through the kind of economic Even development. Even if it was state-sanctioned state violence. Like, what's the statute of limitations? If the state, you know, destroys your home, what's the statute of limitations before You're you can say— You're making statements know? about state-sanctioned violence that I've not— yeah, that's one of the real challenges we have around this event, mm -hmm. is that because it was covered up for three quarters of a century, there are a lot of unknown questions or Law unknown answers around what happened. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons that we're doing this grave search, yeah. so that we can Historians better Historians acknowledge that law enforcement was involved. In so that we can better understand what happened. So it's interesting how time repeats itself. And as you can see, uh, the mayor is adamantly against reparations. And I should say, Savannah, that there is the commission to commemorate what happened here. That's run by the mayor and a lot of Republicans here. And separate from that, there is the Justice for Greenwood uh, initiative that's suing the commission. So events for the commission have been canceled. However, the Justice for Greenwood uh, commemoration activities continue. 
Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.